Hey, well, let me take a moment to welcome everybody to North Star. We are so excited that you're with us today. And today is a great day because today is the day that we have opened back up our kids' ministry, and we're excited about that at our Panama City Beach and our Panama City campus. For those of you joining us online, welcome. We are so excited uh, that you're joining us today as we continue to worship together, whether it's in person or online. uh, We are just so excited that you have chosen to join us. We have been in a series over these past seven weeks together that uh, I I just have really enjoyed. Uh, It's a series where we're talking about faith that works when the pressure is on, and we're looking at the book of James because James was writing to a group of people who were facing persecution and not a pandemic. And I know that many of you have had lots of pressure in your life over these past eight months. You just stop and think about it. There's financial pressure. There's social pressure. uh, There's pressure that you have because of uh, your finances and your life, just in particularly of decisions you're trying to make. There's all kinds of pressure that has built up in all of our lives. And what we've been looking at is how do you have a strong faith that helps you during this time when the pressure is on? Today, we're going to talk about real faith versus fake faith. And wouldn't you agree with me that we live in a culture where it's overrun with fake products? In fact, if you think about it just for a moment, uh, you can just about purchase anything at a cheaper price that's a knockoff of the real thing. Uh, Several years ago when I was traveling, I was in New York, and a friend of mine on staff was with me, and they said, dude, we have got to go to Canal Street. And I'm like, What's so special about Canal Street? And they said, well, there you can get uh, you know, a cheaper version of the real thing. You can get something fake, basically, is what they were saying. And they were right. I mean, you could get a Tag Heuer watch, a Rolex. You could get you know, Louis Vuitton purses. I mean, there was all kinds of stuff. But it was all fake. It was a knockoff of the real thing. Now, you know this, and I know this. Today, there's a lot of fake things that we can do. In fact, if you just think about it for a moment today, you can improve your body with fake nails, fake hair, fake teeth, and fake body parts. We won't mention any of those. Even fake tanning. And then you can go out and you can eat a hamburger that has fake meat and fake cheese, and you can put fake sugar in your coffee, and you can wear your fake designer clothes, uh, whether you know it's fake leather or fake fur, and you can basically sit with your fake friends and talk about fake news, and you can also uh, fake your identity, right? There's so many things that we can do that just aren't really us. And there are so many things today that are fake that really aren't real. But here, listen to me because this is important. That's fine in some parts of our world and in some parts of your life. But when it comes to your faith, your faith cannot be fake because it won't work for you. It won't help you when trouble comes in life and when you find yourself with difficulty. In fact, did you know the Bible has over 6,000 promises that God gives to us that he wants us to be able to live out in our life every day? But here's the deal. You can't live with fake faith and live out the life that God wants you to have and be the person that God has uniquely designed you to be because you don't have real faith in your life. Today, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture in the book of James. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. And James challenges us with this idea of fake faith. He's talking to a group of believers, and he's saying, you can't have fake faith. He's actually arguing with them about what real faith really is like. And he gives us some indications of what faith should look like in our lives. And so today, what I want to do before we even begin is I want to challenge you to use this as a test for your faith. That as we walk through this together and as we look at this passage of Scripture together, I want to challenge you in your life to use this as a test to go, you know what, here's a litmus test of whether or not I have real faith or I have fake faith. And let it be a challenge to you in your life to examine, is the faith that you proclaim that you have the kind of faith that is real or is it a fake faith? Is it just something you believe, or is it something that you feel, but it doesn't go beyond that? And we'll talk more about that here in just a moment. But I want you to look with me at James chapter 2. We're going to begin in verse 14, and I want you to listen to what he tells us here. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, what's the use of saying that you have faith if you don't prove it by your actions? So he's asking a question. You say you have faith, but do you have actions that back up the faith that you claim that you have? That kind of faith can't save anyone, is what he tells us. In verse 15, he says, Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing, and you say, 
goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well. But then you, do, don't, or you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So he's basically saying, okay, you see a person in need, uh, you, you, you wish them well, but you don't do anything for them. He says, what good is that kind of faith? And then he goes on and he says, so you see, faith by itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Now, someone may argue, some people have faith, others have good deeds, but I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I will show you my faith by my good deeds. So he's just simply arguing here. He's saying, you say, I'll show you my faith by what I believe. He says, no, I think um, I'll show you my faith by not only what I believe, but by what I do. It's important that there is a part of our faith that becomes action. That's actually what James is trying to get us to see. Verse 19, you say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the demons believe this and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Then in verse 21, he says, Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. And so it happened just as the scripture says, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown to be right with God by what we do and not by faith alone. Then verse 25, he gives another example. Rahab the prostitute is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. Now, it's important for us as we look at this passage of Scripture to understand exactly what James was trying to teach us. In fact, it's important to see that in this passage of Scripture, James helps us to evaluate whether or not we have real faith. In fact, today what I want to do for the next few moments is I want to talk about this idea of how do I know that my faith is real? Because here's what I think. I think some of you listening to me today, you think that you have faith, but your faith is really not a real faith. It's a simple belief that you have maybe in God or it's something you felt at some point in your life. But you find yourself today struggling immensely in your life because the faith that you have is not a real faith that can overcome and that can help you to sustain during these most difficult times. In verse 26, he says this. He kind of closes it out. Just as the body is dead without breath, so also faith is dead without good works. And so he makes this point. This is the the whole point that we're going to talk about over these next few moments, our bottom line. Faith without works is dead, is what James is saying. If you don't have works to accompany the faith that you proclaim that you have, then the reality is your faith is dead. It's not alive. It's not living. It's not a life-changing kind of faith, the kind of faith that we should have in God. So let's take a moment and let's look back through this passage of Scripture. And I want us to uh, ask the question, how do I know my faith is real? How do I know my faith is real? The first thing that I want you to write down that I think is important is this. Real faith is more than just words I say. Real faith is more than just words I say. Now, most of us have probably experienced this. Sometimes faith is just words. It's just a prayer that somebody recites over and over and over again. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And that same prayer is recited every night. It's just words. And those words literally have lost significance and meaning. See, talk is cheap, and that's what James wants us to understand. You can talk about faith. You can say the right words. You can even say the right prayers. But that's not faith. That's not the kind of faith that that saves. It's not the kind of faith that changes a person's life. In fact, listen to how he puts it. He says, dear brothers and sisters, what's the use of saying, notice the, the word saying, saying you have faith if you don't prove it by your actions? That kind of faith can't save anyone is what James tells us. In fact, it's not about knowing the lingo, right? You've met people like this. They can 
quote the scriptures. They can tell you the verses. Uh, they got the right lingo. They can say the right things. Uh, and it seems like they're very spiritual. Like you look at them and you think they have a great faith. They have all the right things to say. But let me tell you something. Did you know this? That the majority of Americans claim to be Christians. They believe that they are followers of Jesus. But here's the question that I have. Why is it that most of the people who proclaim to be followers of Jesus that say they are Christians are the same ones who, if you really look at their life, they're 180 degrees away from what they say they are. They live very differently in their life every day. They profess with their mouth these words. They proclaim certain things and they say certain things, but the actions by which they live and the choices that they make and the things that they do are so far away from the message they're proclaiming to live out in their life on a daily basis. And so James comes and he says, real faith is more than just words that you say. In fact, we're reminded in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, listen to what it says. Jesus, not everyone who says that I am their Lord is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This verse, for the longest time, scared me to death. Because it made me really stop and evaluate, okay? Not everyone who says that I am their Lord is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. The only people who will enter heaven are those who do what my Father in heaven wants them to do. Do you know what Jesus was telling us there? He was saying, listen, it's more than words. There's actions that have to back up the words that you proclaim with your mouth. There's action that goes to you being obedient to what God has specifically asked you to do and the way that you're going to live out your life um, every day. So the first thing that James tells us is real faith is more than just words, words that I say. But then secondly, notice this, real faith is more than emotion I feel. It's more than an emotion that I feel. James tells us in chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, he takes this idea of emotion, right? Like, like I got goosebumps one time when I was singing this song, and, and I, I think I had this experience with God. Or, or, or maybe the hairs on the back of your neck stand up, and you, you've got this emotional feeling. Now listen to me. There's nothing wrong with emotion, but he says your faith has to be so much more than just an emotion you feel. It has to be more than just sympathy that you feel for, for other people. In fact, he gives us this example. Listen to what he says. Suppose you see a brother or sister who needs food or clothing, and you say to them, I wish you well. I feel for you. What's he saying? You, you, you have compassion. You have feeling. And I hope you stay warm and eat well. So you, you actually tell them, I hope you stay warm. I hope you eat well. But notice what happens. But then you do nothing to meet their needs. What good does your sympathy do? So he's saying, what good is your sympathy if you're not willing to do something to help them? Hey, I, I see that you don't have food. I see that you're hungry. I, I want you to know, man, I sympathize with you. I'm so sorry. I mean, can you imagine like saying that to someone and just walking away? He says, it's worth nothing. In the same way, faith, if it is not accompanied by action, doesn't work. It's dead and it is useless. So, so think about this just for a second. Let me just illustrate it another way. Let's say that I was out in the parking lot today, and uh, I, when I went to close the door, I, I closed my hand in the door, and I couldn't get my hand out, right? And, and so I'm sitting there, and I'm trying to get it out, and I can't, I can't get it out. And somebody walks by, and they say, Pastor Marty, I sympathize with you. It must be painful for your hand to be in the door. And, and I mean, they just look at me, and they say, just, just know I'm going to pray for you, and, and I hope everything works out. And they just walk off. I don't need their sympathy in that moment. What I need is I need their assistance, right? I need action. I need them to try to open the door to get my hand out, not just to sympathize with me. And that's exactly what James is saying here about our faith. He said, it can't just be a faith that has sympathy for others, a faith that just feels sorry for other people, but it has to be a faith that springs into action, you know that right here in our community during COVID-19, there have been families without food, and our church has been able to help those families. We've been able to feed people, and we consistently do that on a weekly basis, not only through some of the ministries that we support, but even right here, we, we do it ourselves. We try to help out with people that have uh, needs in their life. Now, what kind of church would we be if we just said, uh, well, we just sympathize with those that are hurting? 
We sympathize with those that, you know, we'll pray for them, but we're not going to do anything to help them. And that's what James is saying here. He says, real faith is more than just an emotion. It's more than just feeling sympathy. It's something that springs into action. And then he goes on and he says this, real faith is more than an idea that I debate. It's more than an idea that I debate. Here he's talking about, it's more than a conversation, you ever met somebody that all they want to do is they just want to debate theology or they want to talk about the Bible, and, and, and that's really all their faith is. It, it's just a head knowledge. It's a knowledge of, of who God is. It's a knowledge of the things of God, and they, they just constantly want to argue. They constantly want to talk about those things. James chapter 2, verse 18, James says it this way. It's more than just a debate. He says, now someone may argue, isn't it possible that some people have good faith while other people do good deeds? And so it's an honest question. He's saying, somebody may say, well, you know, some people have deeds that show forth their faith, but some people actually have what? They, they, they have this idea that they have faith and they can talk about it and, and they can debate and they got this knowledge of who God is. And he just comes out and he just says, but here, here's something that's important. He goes on, he says, but I say, no, I can't see your real, the real faith in you. You don't do any real deeds to show me. In contrast, I can show you my faith by the good things that I do. So what's he saying here? He's just saying, all right, you want to talk about what you believe. You want to use words to debate and, and talk about the glory and the majesty of God and uh, you know, all the things that you know theologically. But there's no deeds in your life to show the faith that you have, the work that you've done, how you have been faithful to God in, in doing what? In living out your faith every day of your life. And so he tells us, he says, real faith is more than an idea that I debate. Let me just ask you this question. When's the last time you took some of the knowledge that you have about God and who God is and you actually used that knowledge and applied it in such a way that it led to action in your life? that you really were willing not just to sympathize with somebody, but knowing that they're hurting, you entered into their pain and you helped them and you, you, you worked your faith out with them to, to allow them um, and, or, to, or to, to come alongside them and to help them in their time of need. That's what James is saying here. It's more than just this idea that you debate. There's actions behind the words that you confess with your mouth. There's actions that go along with it. And then number four, real faith. Real faith is more than just a truth that I believe. It's more than just a truth that I believe. Now, it's amazing to me how James kind of leans in here and he says, it's more than just this truth. And the example he gives is amazing when you stop and think about it. Here's what he says. Listen to the words that he, that he speaks. Now you say... Well, I believe there is a God, and I say, good for you. But even the demons believe that, right? He says, even the demons believe in God and are afraid. It is foolish not to realize that faith in God is useless if you don't do what the, um, I'm sorry, if you don't do what he wants you to do. So your faith is useless unless you're doing what? Unless you're doing exactly what God wants you to do. What is James saying? He's saying, it's more than just a truth that I believe. There's this obedience part. Obedience is the key to real faith. I say I believe in God. I believe that, that part of being a follower of Jesus is sharing my faith. But then there's action where I share my faith with others. I live it out in front of them on a daily basis. I say that God has called me to love everyone. And when my brothers and sisters around me are hurting or when something's going on in this world that I don't understand, I show love not by the words that I speak but by my actions, the way I live out my life, how I treat them and what I say about them and how I live it out every day as I work out my salvation as I live it out in front of them and in front of the world that is around me. And so what he says is there's this obedience part. There's this part where you say that you have faith, but here's, here's the question James is asking, but do you obey what God wants you to obey? Let me just give you an example. I remember when I first got saved, one of the things that one of the pastors that actually, or actually was a mentor of mine that had led me to Christ, he said, Marty, there's a couple of things you need to do, I mean, immediately. And it was just a few things. He just said, one of the first things you need to do is get into the Word of God every day. He was talking about a quiet time. Spend time with God, walk with Him, get to know Him, let Him speak into your life through His Word so that you'll know what are the right things to do. And then he told me, he said, you need to get in a church, and you need to begin to tithe. 
Now, when, when he started talking about tithing, that was a difficult thing for me to understand. But you know what? As I read scripture and I saw that it was part of being obedient, I realized that, hey, for me to say that I have faith, but not to be obedient to God and honor him with the first fruits of my life is actually disobedience. The faith that I have is not real faith because I'm not obeying. Now, this is not popular, guys. Listen to me. I know what I'm saying right now. It's one of those things that people go, hey, be careful talking about obedience because when you talk about obedience, people will check out on you. But guys, listen to me. If we say we're followers of Jesus, we have to obey the commands of God or otherwise we're living in disobedience or we don't have real faith because our faith hasn't moved into action. And so the last thing that I want us to see, number five, is this. Real faith, real faith is something I do. It's something I do. It's not just words that I confess. It's not a truth that I believe. It's not something that I argue about you know, or debate with others about just in, in knowledge, right? But real faith, real faith is something I do. It's a choice that I make every day when I get up. It's me saying, God, today you're calling me to do certain things, and, and I'm going to do that today as I live out my life, as I follow you with all of my heart. And so James is coming to us, and he's, he's trying to help us to understand that there are people that say that they have faith, but there's no actions to back up the words that they're professing with their mouth. And so I want to ask you a question. I want you to think about this personally in your own life. Do your words get backed up with action? Is there action to back up the words that you proclaim? You say that you're a follower of Jesus, but do you love everyone, right? Because the Bible says that we're to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. The greatest measurement of our love for God is do we love other people? If you say, no, I don't love other people, well, then I got to tell you something. The faith you have may not be real faith because there's no way that you can experience the forgiveness of God on the inside and not yet love others. Do you have the kind of faith that doesn't just sympathize with people who are going through bad situations or circumstances, but do you have the kind of faith where you engage with that person, you help them, your faith becomes action, it does something? That's what James wants us to understand. He wants us to know that we have to have the kind of faith that produces works, the kind of faith that leads to action. In fact, he goes on and he says this in James 2, verse 26, just as a body without a spirit doesn't breathe and is dead, so faith that doesn't do anything is just as dead. He, he, here's, here's, here's the illustration. He, he's basically saying this. If you take a pen and you poke a dead person, nothing's going to happen, right? They're not going to move. They're not going to flinch. They're, they're, there's, there's no reaction because they're dead. He said, well, in the same way, if you take the word of God and you poke a person who's not spiritually alive and, and they don't move, the word doesn't move them to action. It doesn't cause them to want to do something. He said, then that person probably is dead because the faith that doesn't do anything is just as dead as a dead person. And so James wants to come in and challenge us today. He wants you and me to be challenged in our life to say, let's measure our faith and ask whether or not it's a real faith. Is it a faith that has actions or is it a faith just in words? Is it a faith that produces deeds, that, that there's this work in my life where I'm living it out every day as I live out my life in front of others? And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, it says this, stand firm in your faith, stay brave, be strong, and do everything in love. And so the challenge that I want to give you this week in your life, and the challenge that I want to challenge me with is that we would be people that don't just speak with words and say that we are followers of Jesus, but that we would have a faith that works a faith that is real, a faith that is not fake where we say, hey, I believe this, but there's no action to back up what we say or what we profess with our mouth. And so this week, I pray that as God gives you opportunity, that the one thing that you would do is to say, you know what? I want to have real faith. 
And I want to be the kind of person that I, I live it out every day in my life. It's more than just a knowledge or a belief or a feeling or an emotion. It, it, it's a faith that, that not only calls me to action, but it's a faith where I engage completely with God and his word, where it works in my life and it molds and it makes me into the person that, that God wants me to be. And then this week, as you live out your life, I want you to evaluate. I want you to take these questions and say, hey, is the kind of faith that I have real faith? Real faith is more than just words I say. Real faith is more than this emotional feeling. Real faith is not, uh, not an idea that I debate. And real faith is more than a truth that I believe. It's way more than that. What is real faith? It's something that I do. It's something I live out every day in my life. And you know what? During COVID-19 and this pandemic, as followers of Jesus, we have an opportunity every day in front of us to live our faith out. And I pray that each and every one of us would do that, that we would have an acting faith, a faith that is what? It's full of action and movement that's moving us forward in our life and not just standing still, but the kind of faith that is real, so real that it changes the people around us, and it changes us as we live it out every day. I'm going to ask you if you would to bow your heads, and we're going to pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the fact that your word is living. And God, when we take your word and we open it up, it comes to life, and it begins to help us to understand how to live our lives. And today, James challenges us with this idea about fake faith and real faith. The importance to understand whether or not we really have real faith, true faith, the kind of faith that is um, in action. And Father, I pray for all of us today, if we find ourselves sitting here this morning going, you know what, I'm not sure that I have real faith, then God, I pray that before we close this service, that we truly would put our faith and our trust in you. And for those of us that do have faith, I pray that, God, you would continue to help us to live in obedience and to live out our faith every day as we walk with you. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, some of you today, I know that you're sitting there and you're going, man, you know, I don't know if I really have true faith. I mean, maybe it's just been an emotion or a feeling. Maybe it was something that you believed when you were a little kid, but it's never really changed your life. And if that's the kind of faith you have, it's fake faith, it's not real faith. Real faith changes you from the inside out. Real faith makes you into a different person. Real faith means that you're different this year than you were last year. Your life is always changing because you're walking in faith with God and obedience to Him. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor Marty, I don't know that I have that kind of faith, then I want to give you an opportunity right now to surrender your heart and life to God, to put your faith and your trust in Jesus, and to begin to follow Him in obedience with all of your heart. You say, what do I have to do? The Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's with the mouth that man confesses and the heart that he believes. And so right now, right where you are, you can pray a prayer, something like this, in your heart. Just mean these words to God. Say, dear God, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. And I believe that Jesus was exactly who he said he was. That he died on the cross for my sins. He was buried and then resurrected to give me eternal life. And by faith, I trust and I believe that Jesus was exactly who he said he was. I open my heart and life to you, ask you to come in, be my Lord, my master, and my savior. Give me the kind of faith that allows me to live my life differently and give me the strength to do that now as I follow you with all of my heart. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, if you just prayed that prayer, it's the greatest decision you'll make in your life. And I want to pray for you as we close our services today. And so I'm going to ask you to do something very brave across all of our campuses. If you just prayed that prayer with me, would you just raise your hand? Just, just hold it up there just for a second. There you go. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to pray for you now. Father, thank you for every hand that has gone up today. I pray that you would help every single person who has put their faith and trust in you today. I pray that you would help them to begin to live that out with action this week. For Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, I want to thank you for joining us here at North Star today. And I hope that it has been a life-changing experience for you. And I want to encourage you to join us next week as we continue to worship together. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.